Hello and welcome. If you watch my videos, you know Python is my favorite programming language. I use Python in all my coding interviews because it's simple and easy to understand. In a coding interview, I only have 45 minutes, so I want something that allows me to convert ideas to code as fast as possible. Even though I don't use Python a lot during my professional experience, learning this language is definitely worth it. In this video, I will go over everything you need to know about Python for coding interviews. I hope this video can help you better prepare and land your dream job. So without further ado, let's dive in. First of all, unlike other languages, Python is dynamically typed. That means the same variable can have different types. For example, we first assign n equal 1, 2, 3, but later I can reassign n equals a, b, c, and the code will run perfectly fine. You can do multiple assignments with Python as well. For instance, we have three variables a, b, and c, and we assign them to three different values in the same line. If statements in Python is very simple. You can create an if statement with multiple clauses. To combine these clauses, you can use the AND keyword or the OR keyword. In this case, I have A equals 2. Then I check if A is greater than 1 or not. Then I create B equals 3. Then I check if both A and B are positive or not. Then I create C equals 5. Then I check if both A and B are positive or C is greater than 5 or not. Next, let's talk about loops. Most interview questions will involve in looping in some forms, so it's important to know this. There are for loops and while loops. Let's say I have an array nums equal 1, 2, 3, and I want to loop through it. I can use a for loop with indices. I can loop directly without using indices, or I can loop using the enumerate method. So the enumerate function gives me access to both the index and the value. I can also create a while loop for the same logic. First, set an index i equals 0, then loop until i reach the end of nums. For each step, bring the number at that index to the console. As you can see, all for loops give me the same result. Python allows you to do integer division. You can use a double slash to do it. The result will be routed to the largest integer. For example, 5 divided by 2 is 2. However, there are some cases where you want to do integer divisions and route the results towards 0. The double slash operation works fine with positive integers, but not negative integers. For example, minus 3 divided by 2 is minus 2. To fix this problem, instead of using a double slash, you can do a normal division and use the int function to convert it towards zero. Python has a math library that allows you to perform basic math operations. You can take the floor or the ceiling of a division, take a square root, or compute the power of a number. In some coding interviews that require finding the minimum and maximum values, you need access to the largest and smallest integers. The smallest integer in Python is minus infinity, and the largest integer is infinity. Let's discuss some of the basic data structures you will see 99% of the time in coding interviews. The first one is array. Array allows you to add number in order and access elements using indices very efficiently. Let's say you have an array of 1, 2, 3. You can use this array as a stack. A stack is a data structure that follows the file low order. That means the first element comes to the stack will be the last element that comes out of the stack. You can add new elements to the top of the stack using the append method. You can also pop in new elements out using the pop method. You can initialize an array with a given size as well. This is very convenient when solving dynamic programming problems. To create an array, First, define a size variable. In this case, we want to create an array of size 5. Then, I create an array that only contains 1 by using nums equal 1 multiplied by size. You can access the last number in the array at index minus 1. This may not work in many languages, but it does in Python. This is quite convenient when you want to return something on top of a stack 
or the final solution for a DB problem. Python allows you to slice arrays. Let's say you have an array nums equal 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To do array slicing, you can call nums stock index, colon, and index. Python will create a new copy of the subarray from the start index to the end index. The end index is excluded. For instance, to get a subarray starting at index 1 and end at index 4, you can call nums 1 colon 4. It will bring out 2, 3, 4. Notice that the end index doesn't need to be smaller than or equal to the size of the array. For example, if I want to get all numbers between index 1 and 10, the result would be 2, 3, 4, 5. Additionally, you can do unpacking with array. Let's say you have an array 1, 2, 3, and you want to assign each value to a variable. You can write abc equals 1, 2, 3. Python will automatically assign each variable a corresponding value. To loop through an array, you can use the enumerate function. It gives you access to both the index and the value at the same time. You can also loop through two arrays at the same time. Let's say I have another array of three strings. I can loop through nums and strings by zipping them together. Notice that you can only use the zip function when the size of the arrays are equal. You may want to reverse an array. Let's say you have an array 1, 4, 4, 6, 7. You can create a new copy of the reverse array by calling nums colon colon minus 1. You can also reverse the array in place with the reverse method. Sorting is an important operation for array. But in an interview, the interviewers will not expect you to implement sorting algorithms from scratch. You only need to know the time complexity of it. So using built-in sorting function is fine. To create a new sorted array, you can use the sorted method. To sort the array in place, you can use the dot sort method directly in the array. You can also sort an array based on certain conditions using the lambda function. For instance, I have an array of four person names. If I sort this array, it will be in the alphabetical order. But if I want to sort these strings based on the length of the name, what should I do? I can provide a key attribute in the sorted function and use a lambda function. A lambda function is a function that doesn't require a formal definition and it helps us reduce the amount of code written. In this case, the lambda function takes in x as the person name and use the size of x to compare. Another cool feature of Python is list comprehension. It allows you to create new array with just one single line of code. This feature helps you write clean and readable code. Let's say I want to create an array of square values of all integers between 1 and 5. I can write something like this. Python will take every index i and square it, then insert to the array. If you want to create a new array with all zeros, you can do something like this. This will create a new array with three rows and four columns. However, you may be thinking, why not converting this loop into a multiplication? But this doesn't work in Python. The result of this operation is a 3 by 4 matrix of zeros, but Python didn't create three separate rows. They are linked together. So if I change the first value of the first row to 1, the first values of other row will also be 1. String is just an array of characters. However, strings are immutable. If I want to change the first character to an uppercase A, Python will complain. To update a string, you have to create a new one. For example, if I want to convert the first character to an uppercase letter, I have to convert the letter to an uppercase and then add a new copy of the rest of the string. You can convert a string to an integer using the int method and an integer to a string using the str method. Each character has a different ASCII value. To access the ASCII value of a character, you need to use the order function. This function is very convenient when you want to sort the array in linear time. You can combine multiple strings into a single string using the join function. I have three strings A, B, C, D, and E, F. I can combine them with a comma to create a new string. 
Q is another common data structure in coding interviews. It's often used in the breadth first search algorithm. To create a queue, you can import the DAC data structure from the collections library. You can insert elements to the queue with the append method. You can also dequeue using the pop left method. Next, we have hash set. This data structure is convenient when dealing with duplicates because it only stores unit numbers. Moreover, the data structure allows insertion, deletion, and searching in constant time. To insert a new number to a set, you can use the add operation. You can use the in keyword to check if a number exists in a hash set or not. To remove a number from a set, you can use the remove method. A more general case of a hash set is a hash map. In Python, people often call it a dictionary. Instead of storing all unique keys, a hash map allows you to store key value pairs. And just like a hash set, on operations can be run in constant time. To insert a new key value pair, you can put the key in a square bracket and assign that key to a value. To check if a key exists or not, you can use the in keyword. To remove a key from a hash map, you can use the del keyword, then specify the entry you want to remove. You can do for loops with hash map as well. You can loop through each key you can loop through each value using the values method, or if you want both the key and the value, you can use the items method. Tuple is also a common data structure you can leverage in Python. To create a tuple, you can use parentheses instead of brackets. However, unlike arrays, tuples are immutable. If I assign the first value of a tuple to something else, an error will occur. Tuple is often used at keys in a hash map because it's hashable. You can try to do this with Python list, but Python will complain because arrays are not hashable in Python. Heap is the final famous data structure in the list. This data structure allows you to access the minimum and maximum value in constant time. To use heap in Python, we need to import the heapq library. This library has three functions, heap push, heap pop, and heapify. To create a heap, just define it as an empty array, then use the heap push function to insert new elements in. The top of the heap can be accessed at index 0. To pop elements from the heap, you can use the heap pop function. Because this is a mean heap, the result will be sorted in ascending order. You can also convert an array to a heap using the heapify function. Python will convert a Python list to a heap in place. However, heapEQ only supports mean heap, so how can we implement a max heap? The trick I use is to multiply minus 1 to every number I insert into the heap. When I pop it out, I will multiply it with minus 1 again. This way, the largest number will always be on the top of the heap. Next, let's talk about functions. To define a new function in Python, you can use the def keyword, then the name of the function, then provide a list of arguments inside the parentheses. The nice thing about Python is that it allows you to define a function inside another function. I often use this feature to write helper functions because the inner function will have access to all variables in the outer function. This way, I can keep the argument list for the inner function clean. Moreover, you will need to know how to update variable inside another function. Let's say I have a function that has a result variable as an integer. Then I pass this variable to function 2 and add 1 to it. However, after this operation, the value of result is still 0. The reason being, an integer is passed by value in Python. Python only creates a copy of result and update it in function 2, but it doesn't update the original value. That's why it's still 0. To fix this, you can wrap the result variable inside an array and pass it to function 2. Because array is passed by reference, the original value of the result is updated. Finally, we will discuss class. To create a new class in Python, you can use the class keyword. Let's say we have a student class and it has two attributes, GBA and name. The init method is called a constructor. 
This is where the Python object is created. To define another method, you can create a function and pass the self keyword to that function. Self here means the object itself. It is similar to this in other languages like Java. To create an object, just call the name of the class and provide all the attributes. Here, I have a student named Alice with a GPA of 3.6. You can access the name of the student using the getName function. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoy it. If you like the video, please like and subscribe. That supports the channel a lot. And I will see you in the next video. Peace.